Hello, hello, friends. So today what we're going to do is uh, we're going to write two functions, one, uh, two search functions. Uh, and this is going to be one for binary search and then one for linear search. Well, we'll actually do linear first. Uh, linear search and binary search are two of the um, the first algorithmic search search algorithms that I or blah, blah, blah. two of the first search algorithms that I learned and uh, they're good to know. So um, binary search is going to be O of n time, and what that is what that means is that basically the way that uh, linear search I'm sorry the way that linear search works is let's say that we have an I right here. Well, we'll check. Uh, we have a number passed in. Let's say we're trying to find the number 10. It, uh, it'll check, is I 10? No. Is I 10? No. Is I 10? No. Is I 10? No. And it will go all the way until it reaches 10. Now, this doesn't have to be sorted. It can be sorted or not. Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, the reason that uh, this solution is fairly slow is because it has to iterate through every single element in the array in order to run. So let's say that the array is 10 million characters long, then it will have to iterate 10 million characters if it could iterate at up to 10 million characters, depending on where the element that we're looking for is. So it's O of n time, which means that, that basically, as the array grows, the time the time in which it will take this algorithm to run grows uh, proportional with it. So let's just write it out real quick. So function, and this will be linear search linear search and uh, what we're going to do is pass in an array sorted or not sorted and an element that we're looking for and so it's fairly simple what you have to do is just and we'll use an old-school for loop here so we get I out of the box for free instead of having to like to use index of or something like that so we'll go uh, for let I equal zero ah oh my god come on let for let <laughs> I equal zero I uh, less than r dot length i plus plus. So we'll move through the array, and we'll say if uh, r at i is equal to uh, lm, uh, then we'll basically just uh, return i. And if that is not the case, we'll just return negative one. For if it's not in the array, we'll just return negative one. Uh, and that should be good. So let's go ahead and console log this to see if it works. Uh, linear search. And we'll call it with R. And the element we're looking for is, let's just say 5, which we can see is present within the array right here. So let's save that, go into node. Node, what's name of the file? Search. Okay, so it's at the fourth element, zero, one, two, three, four. So that's working. Let's put negative five in there. So we should get negative one back because it's not present. Negative one, cool. So this is working, and this is the linear search algorithm. Uh, slow, but uh, it does the job on sorted or unsorted arrays. Uh, now what we'll do is we'll do binary search, which is a little bit more complicated, but uh, it is a lot faster. The reason it's faster is, let's say, let's go back up to this array. Let's say that this array is sorted. The thing about binary search, it can only work on sorted arrays. If the array is unsorted, then it's fairly useless. So let's just say, let's assume that the array is sorted, and let's say that the array is 10 million units long. Instead of going through each individual unit, trying to find something, uh, each individual element, we can just find it much the way that you would look up a word in a dictionary, for example. So if I'm looking at a dictionary, and I know that I'm looking for a word that starts with the letter Z, that, or not even Z, let's do something like R, something toward the end of the alphabet, I can go to the middle of the book and see, well, am I at R or am I before R? If I'm before R, then I can eliminate the first half of the book and then just start working on the second half of the book where I know that R is. Uh, similarly, if we have something here, let's say that we have uh, a starting uh, pointer and then we have an ending pointer right here, well in the middle we can have a middle pointer right here, which would just be basically the averages of the starting end pointer. So we compare the middle pointer that we have to the element being passed in. If we're looking for the number 7 is what we're looking for, and we go to the middle point, our middle point 
is 5. Is 7 greater than 5? Yes, it is. So that we would just move our start point up to here and our end point back to here. Now our middle point would be 7. So that's a quicker way to go through learn uh, to go through finding and searching it rather than uh, just going hey uh, you know is this uh, you if you have an I right here uh, I is this seven no 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 so um, it's a quicker way to search through the codes a little bit more uh, uh, difficult but not that difficult to write so let's just write it out you'll see as we go through it uh, this is binary search, and we're also going to pass in an array and element, same as last time. So like we were saying, let's do a start point, and that'll just be zero. Uh, end point is going to be uh, r dot length minus one to get the last element in the array, and then middle is just going to equal math dot floor at a start plus end divided by two to just get the average of that array. And math.floor rounds down. So let's say we have seven elements in the array. Seven divided by two is 3.5. If you use math.floor, it'll round it down to three. If you use math.seal, it'll round it up to four. I always use math.floor. So just be, uh, you can use either one, but use whichever one that you use, be consistent in, in the way that you use it throughout the uh, function. Uh, cool, so we got that. So basically, instead of writing a for loop, we'll want to write a while loop. And we'll just basically say while uh, our middle, while the middle point is not equal to lm, uh, and we need another condition, while um, uh, start is uh, less than or equal to end, what do we, we want to do some stuff. What we want to do is basically check. So we'll go if uh, r at middle is less than lm. So if it's less than lm. So let's say that we we're looking for uh, we're looking for seven, and our middle point is five. So if our middle point is less than our element, we want to move the starting point up to middle plus one because we've already checked this five. We know that it's not it, so we can move the middle of the start point to here. So we'll go start equals middle plus one. And then else we'll just go if it's the opposite to where uh, end is uh, greater than so basically if we're if we're looking for seven, and, uh, or let's say that we're looking for, let's say our middle point is five, we're looking for three. So the, the element is gonna be less than the middle point. We can move the end point to uh, uh, middle point minus one. So that makes sense, right? End equals middle minus one, right? Wait, I did something wrong. I made a syntactical error, I believe. Else. Wait, or did I? No. Yeah, that's right. So uh, else we'll do uh, end equals middle minus one. And then no matter what happens, we're always going to want to reset our middle to be the new... Um, to take to take in the average of the new start and end point. So we just copy this line, put it right here. Uh, and then we'll return, uh, what are we gonna wanna return? So if r at middle is equal to lm, we'll use a ternary operator here. If that's the case, we'll return uh, middle. And if not, we'll return negative one. Make sure I didn't make it. I feel like I'm making syntax errors here with these brackets. So that's there. That's there. That's there. 
and that's there. Yeah, okay, that should be good. So let's check and make sure that this works. Looks like it should. So let's go, let's console log, binary search with R and uh, LM. Or, well, let's do five or three. Let's do three. And then let's make sure that our array has three in it. Move it down here. Uh, so three should be the zero, one, two. Uh, three should give us back two if this is working properly. Cool. And uh, let's do nine, which should be the last element. And it'll give us eight, yes. And let's do negative three. This should give us back negative one because it's not present. Okay, cool, negative one. All right, so big uh, takeaways from this. Oh, yeah, also just to clean this up a little bit because I really don't like, see, you saw the problems I was having with the brackets. If the if the statements are really short, you can just go ahead and write these all on one, on one line like this. And then put this else here. Uh, take this, take this out. And so that just cleaned up the code a little bit. Let's make sure it still works. Negative one, and then we'll do it with three, two. Okay, so these are the two different ways. Uh, this is binary search. And then this right here is linear search. Linear search is a lot shorter. It's easier to write, but it's way shorter. It's O of n time. Uh, binary search, it's faster. It's a little bit more going on with the logic within it, but um, it's a lot more of a fit and efficient search. I'm going to be doing some more stuff with like different search algorithms, and then we'll do sorting algorithms after that, all within JavaScript. So. If this didn't make sense, go ahead and rewatch it, walk through the code. And uh, I try to keep this stuff moving pretty fast to not make the video so super long. But, uh, but yeah, this is good stuff. So I hope it helped. Take it easy.